everyone. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time with Tommy, the pro wrestling podcast with Tommy Norbs and me, Brittany. So let's raise our... Gl- I don't have tea today, but I have uh, electrolytes to drink. Oh, <laughs> so... We should... Uh, anyway, apologies. Yeah. Go ahead. Anyways. All good. So on this episode, we have a very special guest from Italy. He is Nico Narciso. Welcome, Nico. <laughs> Pleasure to be here, guys. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, I'm, I'm excited. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. So, Tommy, Norbs, me, let's just raise our glasses one more time to, to Nico. Yeah, I have no drink. To I Nico. wanted to look for And for Nico. And for Nico, <laughs> wow. Yeah, I have no drink with me. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. That's Next all time. good. Next time, Nico, we're good. We're good. So first things first, we really want to know, like, how did you get into wrestling? What inspired you to get into wrestling? Um, all right. Uh, so there was no, um, no real inspiration, except from the fact that uh, I fell in love with wrestling the first time I saw it. I got struck uh, when I saw the fir- my first wrestling match. I was four years old. It was on Eurosport, which is a channel in uh, Europe that uh, airs sports, whatever kind of sports, really like uh, even uh, way um, far from the uh, usual, um, you know, mainstream sports, they air everything like pool, uh, hockey, like uh, stuff that, well, hockey is very popular in Canada, but yeah, in the Europe, it's not so much. Um, so yeah, I got, I got to see it the first time. Uh, I have no idea what promotion it was. I have no idea who, um, uh, who the wrestlers were. But I just remember it was a tag team match and I got struck the first time I saw it. So going on with life, I decided, hey, like this is something I want to get into and, and this is something I want to do. Fast forward to 23 years old when I knew about the first professional school, the first good school that opened in my area. I moved to Bologna to study and work. And um, I knew about uh, Bologna Wrestling Team, which is my home school, which is my home promotion and uh, and the place I got raised as a professional wrestler. And uh, as soon as I knew about it, as I knew about it, I decided to to sign in and uh, the rest is history. I mean, I started training. I uh, debuted nine months uh, into my training. It was kind of early. I don't know if I was really ready for it, but the debut match went well. And uh, then nothing. I really put a lot of effort, a lot of energy, a lot of passion, a lot of work uh, into becoming a good wrestler. And uh, I'm hopefully on my way to, to do a good career out of it. First five years were good. We're way above expectations for sure. When I started, I, I thought, hey, you know, I'm going to do a few matches and then I'll see like how these, these things, things will go. I didn't know that I could have wrestled in uh, six European countries. I could wrestle former WWE guys, current WWE guys, uh, current AEW guys, people like and meet and work with uh, absolute legends and uh, bona fide professionals in, in this industry. So, uh, yeah, the first five years of my career were absolutely good. I'm really, really happy about it. I'm not satisfied by any means, though, now that I'm, I'm still young. And uh, I kind of understand the business a little more. I really want to do more. I want to, you know, keep on uh, going, become a better wrestler, a better athlete, uh, and get back to the ring uh, whenever uh, this pandemic finishes and uh, life goes back to normal. Uh, the fastest, the strongest, the best wrestler I can I can be and uh, have 10, 20 plus years of career, hopefully a better myself, and rock it. <laughs> nice. Nice. Oh, uh, going on top of that, Nico, um, uh, the n- next question I have to ask you is, you've wrestled all over Europe, which is amazing. Like, you're now currently wrestling British Empire Wrestling. Uh, the Bologna uh, wrestling match, you were there as well. You were also wrestling in Switzerland. How has that experience been, wrestling all over Europe? Like, can you share with the viewers how that experience was like? Again, <clears throat> I didn't expect that to happen. And uh, it actually happened very, very soon. Uh, the first promotion that has had me um, after Bologna wrestling team and outside of Italy was LDN wrestling. And I had the hardest time there because I was not ready for it. Definitely. I was very green. I, had, I didn't have a good gear 
I had a gear that was way below uh, sufficient, you know, way below um, a 50% mark, uh, to put it in school terms. So, yeah, I was not a good wrestler. I was, uh, um, uh, I looked like somebody who tried to be it and uh, was not it. And uh, nobody had it from me. Like when I got feedback, when I got the verdict of my of my matches uh, by the promoter, by uh, the most more experienced wrestlers, uh, after after the matches, um, they were really hard on me. And uh, it, it it was good because uh, I started understanding uh, what's necessary to be a good wrestler, to be a good entertainer, to uh, to show well in the ring and not be embarrassed. Uh, yourself and not to you know uh, lower down uh, the quality of the matches and the quality of the wrestling show in general uh, of the company so yeah it's uh, 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 it definitely was as hard as it was for how you know for each and every hard time and uh, every harsh uh, feedback that I got it was a good experience for me and then everything else went better than that because I started improving. I improved my physique, improving my performances, improving my wrestling style, improving my character, everything that's needed to be to be a good wrestler. And uh, uh, I started with Switzerland and then uh, first actually Germany, uh, NEW, the Alex Wright's promotion. I don't know if you remember Alex Wright from WCW. Uh, yeah, he, he, he runs a promotion in Germany and that's one of the first that I got, uh, that got, I got into. It was like not even two years into my career, it was like one year and a half, not even that. Um, and I was a better wrestler by then. And uh, I, could, uh, I could do good matches. I could put on matches that could stick and uh, actually figure well on those shows. So I really couldn't uh, complain about myself. And then uh, I started developing uh, contacts and a career and, you know, uh, uh, go back to England and work for Full Tilt, which is the, the promotion that had me uh, the most, especially in 2019. Um, very good promotion in Newcastle, one of the, the best, especially in terms of uh, production value of storylines of wrestlers. Uh, um, they, they, were, they were doing monthly shows and selling a lot of tickets uh, to, uh, to showcase wrestlers mainly from their academies and from Northeast. So they didn't have any big name, you know, they didn't have any, uh, any of the household independent wrestling names in the UK scene. Uh, they were doing a very, very good job before the, this pandemic started. And uh, uh, I was proud and I was happy to be one of their main guys, one of the top baby faces, because I think, uh, I still think that that company has a great future and that's one of the best places I've worked into outside of Italy. Then again, uh, Italy got well as well because uh, uh, Wrestling Megastars was born and I was their champion for a while. Uh, rising Song Wrestling is one of the fastest rising companies in Europe and they do very good wrestling, and uh, uh, especially in terms of uh, showcasing good wrestlers from the independent scene all over the world, actually. They had Hung Helico, they had Will Ospreay, they had, like, you know, household names, guys, um, uh, that I got to work with also. So, yeah. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's not only related to the places I go, even though yeah, uh, traveling Europe for wrestling was and still is a great experience. I'm still you know grateful and happy, and I cherish uh, every single opportunity that I get to travel, uh, paid for as a worker, as a you know a working guy. Whenever I I, um, I get to go around Europe, but Italy also is meaningful now. Italy is meaningful, and I want the Italian scene to grow and to become better also because of me, hopefully. So, yeah. Well, <laughs> that's, uh, that sounds amazing. Yeah, for sure. Uh, speaking of uh, your wrestling character and style that you've, that you've uh, talked about, uh, I've seen some of your matches and uh, your images on Instagram and social media. Uh, you're a very lively, charismatic, flamboyant individual with very colorful wrestling attire. Um, the, the tassels that you wear, it's just, it, it feels like it's the ultimate warrior all over again. Um, where did that uh, whole persona come from? Okay, so uh, um, <laughs> I've told you already off air, but I'm going to repeat it. It's no secret, absolutely, in European wrestling. Maybe people that know me from uh, overseas don't know it, but I'm a social activist in life, left wing. So, yeah, the first thing I thought about to portray my character of 
uh, was a guy that could be, you know, closer to what I am in real life because you know how wrestling works, right? You take yourself and you try to extend it uh, to uh, to a point where it's good entertainment uh, when you go to the ring. Team well, management the idea, though, and they said, "Nope, you're gonna be the pretty boy." <laughs> and I said, "Really?" And they said, "Yeah," <laughs> and uh, and that's what happened. So I started with the flat, you know, uh, pretty boy gimmick that I tried, you know, to develop in the first matches of my career, I was embarrassed as fuck, guys. You don't even know. I was, I was shaking before going to the ring because that was never me. I, I always knew that I looked, you know, fine as, as, as a you know, boy, and, uh, not maybe so handsome even because I didn't, I didn't have this much attention before starting wrestling on, on my physical look. Um, I didn't have this much attention. I, I didn't look myself in the mirror so like so many times. I, I didn't uh, cure my uh, my aesthetical perception of, of the people um, so much. Uh, so I, I was really embarrassed. I, I was kind of uncomfortable. Uh, but Bologna Wrestling Team Management and Creative saw something in me, saw a potential in me. Uh, and uh, the characteristic that you, Norbs, uh, pointed out about my persona were actually hidden into myself. And uh, the, the, the thing that, uh, that they did uh, with uh, uh, giving me, assigning me that, that character was just to, you know, pull them out of myself. And then going on with time, I started to feel more comfortable with it. And uh, uh, to the point where now this stuff works, okay? This is, this is established as a um, characteristic of my uh, wrestling persona. And now I can incorporate what I wanted to do in the first place. So, which, uh, which is, you know, the fact that uh, I'm very uh, careful about uh, uh, social aspects of life, about how I behave myself towards people, how about I behave myself towards society and politics, etc. And uh, this is now an operation that I'm, I'm starting doing and, and I want to I wanna develop from now on. Uh, but yeah, the answer to your question, Norms, is... Um, definitely the fact that uh, um, somebody saw something in me that was hidden into myself and that I couldn't pull out without the help of somebody else. And that people is uh, Massimiliano Malpensa, the president of Bologna Wrestling Team, Red Scorpion, the head trainer and creative of Bologna Wrestling Team. And those people are the ones that I have to, uh, to thank for how... Uh, uh, successful was in terms of you know independent wrestling of course uh, my char my character was I know that my character shows well uh, I now know that and uh, it was really a blessing also because of this and then I'm gonna uh, conclude my my answer it was a really blessing a really big blessing because um, this character is uh, easy to match up with other characters in the ring, with any other character. You got the, the big, strong, muscular guy, you know what to do. You got the smaller guy or the ugly guy, you know what to do as well. You got the masked guy, you know what to do as well. You, you want, you, every single character can really well match up with a pretty boy. And that was, that was really, that was really uh, something that helped me into my career because my matches look, looked and were, but also because, Bologna wrestling team decided to assign me this character. So yeah, this this is a, this was a very very good decision uh, by myself to of course to uh, agree to portray this character and also by Bologna wrestling team to assign me that. And uh, I think it was it was a victory overall. Yeah, an excellent story. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, no, I, I really appreciate it. I hope, hopefully, I wasn't too long. No, no it's all no, good. No worries. No worries. It's, it's really <laughs> interesting to yeah. to learn about the journey of your your character development and like creating that persona and um, seeing you like portray it out in the ring. It's really really cool. So, talking about you in the ring for a moment. So, you've been wrestling for about five years now. Is there yeah. like one match in particular that is like the most memorable for you? Like the best match or it could be your worst match or like a match that kind of like changed your career? I cannot help but go in with the match against Mr. Anderson, of course, because it's the biggest, you know, superstar I've ever wrestled. Uh, he is the fucking last opponent of Eddie Guerrero. So, yeah, uh, when, whenever, like, okay, um, I was 14, when Eddie Guerrero died, 
um, I was 14. Yeah, I was 14 years old. Um, four days later, SmackDown was on tour in Europe, and they went to my hometown as well, uh, to Ancona. And I was ready to see Eddie Guerrero wrestling. It was my favorite character. It was my favorite, and still is my favorite wrestler ever. And uh, nothing. Eddie Guerrero dead, was dead. And uh, uh, SmackDown still went on tour. I still went uh, to watch SmackDown live. Still went to, to the arena, to the Palo Rossini uh, arena in Ancona. And Mr. Anderson was there. And he won the Battle Royal. There was a Battle Royal and uh, he was there. And that was my first wrestling show of my life, attending as, as a fan. Fast forward to 2017, I get to go in the ring with him and uh, uh, plan a match with him, uh, have him take in my moves, having him do my, he's rolling someone crash uh, on me, me stealing his entrance. That's, of course, out of the world. Uh, especially when you started just two years before, right? Now, now we probably, it would probably feel different. Uh, it would probably feel like as a step uh, towards uh, what I want to do into my career. But then, back, back then, was I was worried as hell. I couldn't sleep the night before. I, could, I definitely couldn't sleep the night before. Um, wow. Every, yeah. It, so, like, the answer to your question is, uh, is this one. Yeah, the match against Mr. Anderson. Then again, uh, I'm pretty sure that was not my best match. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I don't know if you guys know Mike Verna, who's a, a New York wrestler. Um, he, he wrestled in NXT as well. He's got a very, very big, uh, um, he's got a good, uh, a good, you know, uh, scene, um, good presence in the scene of New York, especially Northeast, uh, of, uh, of America. And he's, uh, he's booked pretty much everywhere all over the States. He wrestled in NXT as well as Mitch Verna. So he came down the show after the wrestling mega stars show after, uh, the one I wrestled Mr. Anderson in, uh, he came down to Italy because he's Italian-American, he's half Italian, he's half American. And uh, he did a small tour of three matches in, uh, in Italy. And the last one was uh, at Wrestling Megastars. And uh, he faced me, he wrestled me. And that match was amazing. He's a great guy, lovely guy. We don't agree with politics, definitely. But he's a great guy, he's a lovely, lovely person. He's, uh, it, it was so available to take anything. Uh, we could plan uh, like everything in one hour, and the match was great. And that's that's probably the the, the number one match uh, that I would uh, that I would go to if somebody asked me what what was your best match ever. I would say that I would that's, say the one against Mike Burning. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Sure. And then one last final question for you, Tommy. Do you want to take it away? No, oh, you 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 you're, you're the beautiful moderator host. Go ahead, Brett. You can ask yeah, me. totally. So <laughs> one last final question before we didn't tell you about this before, but we have a trivia round right after this. So, okay. yep. <laughs> so one last uh, question before the trivia round. So this, going this, I've answered these questions many times, honestly, like I, I'm not <laughs> always. Yeah. So yeah, if there's something different on, go ahead. I'm happy about it. <laughs> nice. Sounds good. So last question. So going forward in your career, which like big time wrestling promotion do you see yourself competing in? Wow. <laughs> um, I would like to, I would like to say NWA or AEW. Mm -hmm. Uh, AEW, yes. Great choices. NWA or AEW. NWA or AEW. Um, I'm, I'm, of course, I would be interested to work in the WWE, definitely. But you've understood by now that uh, politics have a big part in my life. And uh, I think WWE is run by evil forces. And uh, the, the, everything that happened into the last two or three years uh, of their existence uh, uh, really extended all the problems that WWE had with their contractors, with their wrestlers, with their uh, uh, company, with their um, uh, industrial politic in terms of wrestling uh, itself. The relationship with Saudi Arabia is deadful, is shameless, really. And uh, uh, I've answered that to, um, I've, I've said that into a, in other podcasts, like um, almost a month ago, uh, I would uh, not reach for them. 
uh, I would not apply for the tryout. Uh, I would not uh, go for it. You know, I would not go for the WWE. Even though, yeah, it's 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 always been uh, the first uh, promotion that I've seen as a wrestling promotion and uh, the one that made made me fell in love with wrestling. Definitely, I've seen WCW first. And I don't know what that promotion in Eurosport was, but of course, I got into wrestling because of the WWE, and I'm not gonna lie about that. If they show interest in me, would I would I say no? I don't think about. I don't think so. I think that if they show interest in me, I would have it to go because I don't. I want to. I don't want to sound like critical, you know. I don't want to say, hey, you know, that's that's shit, and I'm never going to work for them. If they think that I'm good enough to do that as a job into into their company, I'll definitely consider it. Uh, absolutely, they're. Uh, they're one of the places where a wrestler wants to end up. But then again, you know, 10 years ago, nobody would have thought that a wrestler like me, a young guy that's trying to make their way into this business, uh, would say, mm, no, I'm not going to reach out for them because of reasons of any, you know, valid reasons that, that you can, can, can come up with. Um, so, yeah, the business is changing. The business is changing. There's, there's alternative, there's competition, and competition is good. Uh, in every sense of the every sense of the word, and uh, if there's one dream place now that I would like to go to, it's definitely all elite wrestling. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, yeah, and uh, NWA, <laughs> NWA is NWA is another place that I would really, 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 really like to work in. Uh, it's not my dream place because. Uh, you know, it's not as extended as AEW is right now, but I really dig their style of wrestling. I really dig the fact that they, they don't put too much shit into the matches and moves, 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 flip, spot fast, then another move, move, move. AEW matches, in, according to my wrestling, you know, likelihood, they're too long. They're too full of stuff. Uh, whenever you see the first match of every show, uh, you've seen everything. Because after, you know, after uh, spot fest, like uh, any match that, that you've seen in the, their first tag team tournament, what are you going to see next? Instead, NWA has this, you know, good promote, uh, production value that tells you um, wrestling in the ring is important, but especially in the pay-per-views, but we want to give more time to the storylines, to the characters, to the interviews. And the fact that that's all, that's all done with such a uh, minimal, you know, production value. They have one interviewer, they have one back screen, you know, with the, the NWA power things and uh, the same theater, the same ring. That's amazing to me. That's going back to the 80s wrestling where characters meant a lot, where storylines meant a lot, and the skills that a wrestler needs to have uh, in order to be a good entertainer. So uh, mixed skill, uh, charisma, uh, face, you know, a good, good facial expressions, etc. They are really put into the first place rather than, you know, going for the indie style. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, as a fan, I dig NWA most. That's the, that's the stuff that I used to, before the pandemic, uh, the pandemic started, that's the stuff that I used to watch the most uh, because I couldn't, you know, I couldn't uh, sit through two hours of AEW every time. Uh, but then again, if there's one, if I get to choose one place that I could work in, it would be All Elite Wrestling, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much, Nico, for your answer. So, Tommy, do you want to take it away for the trivia? All right, Nico, man. First of all, I want to say you will. We believe you will make NWA. And then when you make AEW, you got to come back on because, like, we are... Um, oh, well, absolutely, big, guys. We are big <laughs> AEW fans. We're big fans of yours. You got to co come back on. You'll be all elite very, very soon. That's for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so, Nico... I, I really hope so. I don't, I don't believe 100% of your words, but I really hope so. <laughs> we believe in you 100%. Yeah, well, so. Thank you, there, thank you very much, there. guys. It's, I really appreciate it. Absolutely, Nico. So this is like a fun thing we have at the end of the show, Nico. It's a trivia. So I'm going to ask you five questions. Uh, it's going to be WWE trivia. And don't worry, if you don't know, you can go to the lifeline. Norv's is great at wrestling trivia. So if you're not sure, you get three lifelines, and you can go to Norv's and uh, uh, see if he can help you out. So... Nico and Ercicio, are you ready for... Yes, I am. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. 
question number one. Okay, the first few are going to be a little, little, uh, maybe a little simple here. What is Shawn Michaels' favorite move? What was his favorite move? What was it called? Favorite move of Shawn Michaels, not the finisher. It's a finisher. It's the finishing move he does. He did. Switching music. Boom. One for one. Nico Narcisco, okay. one for one. Here we go. Question number two. Simple, simple, another simple question is, um, what did Triple H stand for? What did it stand for? Hunter Hearst Hemsley. All right. Nice. Two nice. for two. The game. Going for the perfect <laughs> here. Going for the perfect. All right. I've been a wrestling fan my whole life. <laughs> I think... I think this is too easy for you now. I think you're going to get everything now. You won't even need Norbs on this lifeline. So, uh, this is a pretty tough one. This is a pretty tough one. Uh, here we go. Question number three. What was Hulk Hogan's real name? What was his real name? Darren's Jean Bolia. All right. I think this is over, guys. That was a tough one. <laughs> I think we're you done. Got it, you uh, got it. I think I might just end it with three for three. What do you guys think? Uh, <laughs> How many questions wow. do you have left more for him? Wow. There's 12 questions. Right? Like, no, 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 I'm gonna keep going, but that is so impressive. Wow! Wow! Okay, um, question number four. So The Rock, uh, he started two, he's got a lot of movies, uh, The Rock, but he started two big ones with Kevin Hart. Uh, what were those two movies he was with with, with uh, Kevin Hart so far? I don't know. I'm not a The Rock movie fan, definitely. All right. <laughs> No worries, you can oh, head, uh, yeah. you want the lifeline, uh, give the lifeline to Norbs? Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, there was two of them? What, what was I, I can only name one. Uh, one is Jumanji, and, uh, the second one that they did. <laughs> they did, like, two Jumanji movies, right? Yeah, there's, uh, the, the other one. Yeah, but there's the second, uh, The Rock starred in the second one. The first one was Robin Williams, I think, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I actually watched. Was, I actually watched yeah. Jumanji, but I, I I didn't know there was the the other guy you named Thomas on it as well. Yeah, that was, that was the original back in the '90s with Robin Williams. Yeah, Jumanji. yeah. But uh, yeah, um, The Rock and Kevin Hart that did a um, re Wait, was Kevin of Hart in Fast and Furious, or or is that someone else? Was he? Uh, the, that's the Rock. The Rock is in Fast and Furious. I don't know about Kevin Hart. He wasn't no. No, I think that was maybe. Else. That's all I can mind. name, just Jumanji. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, no worries, it was uh, uh, Central Intelligence was the other one. Uh, I don't think we would, I, but, I, Was that even a good movie? That one. <laughs> I, I, the Hulk Hogan question was harder than that one. You go, wow, I'm <laughs> with the Hulk Hogan. <laughs> so, I still can't get over that. I mean, uh, uh, you, know, you know why? You know why I know it? His, uh, um, uh, his last name is uh, originally Italian. Just like Cena, just like John Cena, just like uh, Randy Savage, you know, um, uh, Randall Poffo, right? Yeah. Uh, so these are all Italian, Italian names. And there's this big, you know, joke uh, in Italy where, where they say, hey, you know, our country is shit in terms of wrestling. Uh, but like any like huge, amazing superstar, except from the Rock and Stone Cold probably has as an Italian uh, last name, his Italian surname in it. Bruno yeah. San Martino, Hulk Hogan, Randy Savage, John Cena. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so there's, there's this there. big yeah. joke going, going around. And uh, that's probably the, the reason. But uh, yeah, I, I knew it. I, I knew it even even uh, aside of that. Wow. I, I, I still can't believe that. That's one of the toughest questions I asked in trivia history on Tea Time. Wow. <laughs> so, um, here we go. Question number five. The last one. The Viper, Randy Orton. Who did he defeat to become the youngest ever champion at age 24? Uh, once again, you have two lifelines left with Norris, but... I, 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 I know this answer. According to WWE, he defeated nobody, but uh, that's Chris Benoit. Oh, wow. Hey, Nico, great job. Four out of five, man. That, uh, forgive me for asking that rock thing. It was kind of like, ah, man, <laughs> no, it's, great. It's all right. He it's got all, right. all the, he got all the wrestling ones. He got it. Yeah, he got it. Yeah, he, he got, got it. it. <laughs> Wow! Not a big movie wow. fan. This one is, is the reason. I should, just gonna give, I should just give you the five for five for getting that Hulk Hogan question right. But uh, <laughs> wow! Great job! Great job, Nico! Wow! Uh, great job, Nico! And it's been job. so much fun with having you on the show today. So that is a wrap on Tea Time with Tommy with Nico Chizo. Thank you Nico. for joining us today. Cheers! Thank you. Very, thank you very much for having me, guys. It was a lot of fun. Please. Uh, 
check out my Facebook page, Nico Narciso. Please check out my Instagram uh, profile, Nico Narciso Wrestler, and uh, hit me up with a direct message whenever you want to buy my T-shirt. This is one, the one uh, with uh, three different colors of the star, red, purple, and violet. I, it's available in all sizes, and I can ship towards America or Canada uh, whenever you want. It's, it's, it would be very helpful since, you know, we're not wrestling in this sad period of, uh, of history. So uh, if anyone watching or any one of you wants to buy my t-shirt, I'm all, I'm all here and uh, I'll be here to, to ship it. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Nico. Take care, everyone.